Recently, Emma, Miriam, and myself were asked to be part of a Messianic Passover Seder. Part of the ceremony includes a retelling of the history of Passover, so we thought it'd be cool to share that story with you guys. So here's Miriam, Emma, Michelle, Christina, Joseph, Grandpa Lee, and Joel with the story of Passover. So the story of Passover is a story of miracles, a story of redemption, a story of the mighty power of God to overcome evil. So we have reader one. Assigned. Reader one, Mary, would you like to be reader one? Emma, you can be reader two. Joel, okay. reader three. Shall you can be reader four. The Lord had promised the land of Israel to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yet here were their children in Egypt. The Pharaoh who had come to power feared them. These foreigners in our midst are prospering and have grown numerous, he thought. Suppose they join with our enemies and turn against us. Pharaoh decided to exert greater control over this people, imposing harsh and bitter slavery upon the Israelites. Still, God blessed his people in strength and in number. Pharaoh grew more frightened and ordered every baby boy among the Israelites to be drowned in the Nile River. One Israelite couple hid their little boy for three months. Finally entrusting his future to God, they set him in a basket and placed him upon the river. His sister, Miriam. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know you were in the story. <laughs> <laughs> watched as he floated downstream. Coming upon the basket, Pharaoh's daughter took pity on the child and chose to raise him as her own son. She called him Moses, meaning drawn from the water. Moses grew and became aware of the travails of his people. One day, in a rage, he lost control of himself and killed an Egyptian who was beating a Hebrew slave. Fleeing the palace and the eye of Pharaoh, Moses became a shepherd in the land of Midian, far from the cries of his suffering brothers. The Lord, however, saw the affliction of the children of Israel and heard their groaning. He would raise up a deliverer to lead them out of bondage. It was then that he appeared to Moses in the midst of a bush that burned with fire, yet was not consumed. Moses drew close and listened as God commissioned him to go to Pharaoh. Fearful and reluctant, still Moses agreed to bring God's message to the king of Egypt. God has told me to go to Egypt and free our people. I fear I will not be able to do what the Lord is requesting of me. Moses left the wilderness to return to Pharaoh's palace, the very place where he had been raised. He returned with the message which, which the Lord had given him. But God himself warned Moses of the resistance that he would encounter. I know, I know that, that the king, king of Egypt, Egypt will not let you leave unless he is forced to do so. But I will reach out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders that I will do there. After that, he will let you go. God sent plagues one by one, blood, frogs, Lights, beasts, cattle disease, boils, hail, locusts, dull darkness. Yet with each plague, Pharaoh hardened his heart. The Egyptians became afflicted with discomfort and disease, bane and blight. Still, Pharaoh would not relent. I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. For that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt together, I, I and, and not, not an angel, angel, and kill all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and animals, I, I and, and not, not a, a seraph. seraph, and I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, I, I and, and not, not a messenger. messenger. I am Adonai, I, I myself, myself and, and none other. other. Reader one. On the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb or kid for his family, one per household. Your animal must be without defect, a male in its first year. You are to keep it until the fourteenth day of the month, and then the entire assembly of the community of Israel will slaughter it at dusk. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the two sides and top of the doorframe at the entrance of the house in which they eat it. Reader two. That night they are to eat the meat roasted in the fire. They are to eat it with matzah and meror. meror. Here is how you are to eat it. With your belt fastened, fastened, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you are to eat it hurried, hurriedly. 
It is Adonai's Pesach. The blood will serve you as a sign marking the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. When I strike the land of Egypt, the death blow will not strike you. With the tenth and most awful plague, death, death of the, the firstborn, God pierced through the hardness of Pharaoh's impenetrable heart. Get out! Leave my people and take the rest of the Israelites with you! We are reminded by Moses that it was the Lord himself who redeemed the children of Israel from slavery. Together, and Adonai brought us out of Egypt with a strong hand and a stretched out arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. Give thanks to Adonai, for he is good, for his grace continues forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his grace continues forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his grace continues forever. To him who split the sea of Sul, Suf, continues forever, and made Israel cross right through it, for his grace continues forever, but swept Pharaoh and his army into the sea of Suf, for his grace continues forever. To him who led his people through the desert, for his grace continues forever. Give thanks to the God of heavens, for his grace continues forever. His word is forever alive. <laughs>